Welcome back to In Need of a Refill, where God's Word and the coffee are never in short supply. Thank you for joining us today. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss anything that's coming up on In Need of a Refill. If you have a comment or a question or a passage you'd like us to look at, leave it in the section below. We'll get to it just as fast as we can. Change is hard. It always has been. Uh, very few people would actually say they like to uh, change. And this is nothing new. It has been that way for millennia. In fact, God says, basically, come as you are. You know, he wants us. He loves us. But he also says, don't stay as you were. He expects us to change. He expects us to look more like his son every day. He expects us to be holy because he is holy. And, uh, well, that's a constant battle. Today, what we're going to look at is Jesus as the purifier and what that meant back then and what that may mean for you and me today. Uh, open your Bibles to Malachi chapter 3, and here we're going to read verses 5 through 7. Then I'll draw near to you for judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adulterers, and against those who swear falsely, and against those who oppress the wage earner in his wages, the widow and the orphan, and those who turn aside the alien and do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts, for I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore you, O sons of Jacob, are not consumed. From the days of your fathers you have turned aside from my statutes, and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you say, how shall we return? Even back then, Malachi was written around, uh, around 440, 450, somewhere in there, more than likely, uh, BC. So even around then, they had just come out of captivity, and God tells them, you're still not doing what I want you to do. You're still treating people very, very badly. You're still treating me very, very badly. He tells them that judgment is coming. You know, for you and me, that means, you know, that not only are we going to be judged sometimes on this earth, you know, uh, as far as uh, someone telling us we're doing wrong, uh, but also, We've got Judgment Day off in the future. We don't know how far off where Jesus is coming back and the world will be judged. Judgment is coming. It's not going to be one of those things where we will be able to escape it. Everyone will be before the throne of God and have to give an account for the things that they have spoken is what Scripture says. The things that they have done. Well, what Yahweh calls out here in Malachi, uh, he says that he's going to serve as a witness, that he's going to serve as a witness to what his people have been doing. He's been watching. It's not one of those situations where he has no idea what's going on. That's never been the case. He knows because he has been watching us. And he says that sorcerers, adulterers, those who swear falsely, those who oppress the wage earners, those who oppress widows and orphans, those who turn aside the alien, those who do not fear the Lord, those folks are in trouble. While we were overseas, uh, we were told never work without a contract because that is when a school can come back and just forget to pay you. Oh, we'll get around to it kind of thing. So we never did. We never worked without a contract. Well, some of the folks that were not foreigners over there, they didn't necessarily have that same protection. We knew a young lady that was a sister of ours uh, in the church, thankfully, 
uh, that took a job working at a school. She was a real sweet lady. She knew her, her field. She taught for a full semester and never once did she see any money. You know, oh, we'll get around to it. We'll get around to it. We're going to pay you. We're going to pay you. To this day, I don't know that she ever saw any bit of cash from the school that she was working for. Now, this went on, and I, I don't know if she finally managed to get another job. They're not as easy to uh, quit and uh, pick up another one where we were, at least. So I don't know what happened with that whole fiasco. But all I know is that they were suppressing the wage earners, that they were letting them work, making them work in some cases, and refusing to pay them. Their time is coming. She will not be forgotten by God. You know, she will be vindicated because of what they have done to her. They will have to give an answer. The Lord has not changed his standards. He hasn't. He hasn't changed his commands. You know, here's the thing. The people back then, and let's be honest, the people today, if they don't like the command, they tend to ignore it. Or if they want to do something contrary to it, they tend to ignore the command. They, they tend to ignore the statutes. Well, the good news is that God doesn't change. He loves us and will continue, at least for a while, to give us another chance but at the same time if we don't return that day of judgment is not going to go so well for us we will have to give an account for the things that we have done for the things that we have said you know and there is nothing that we can hide from him that's always been the case well, if you flip over to uh, Matthew chapter 5, at the very, very end of Matthew chapter 5 and verse 48, here is what Jesus says. Therefore, you are to be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Our relationships matter. They do. Uh, and they have responsibilities. And sometimes this means that um, when we see that we are not doing right, that means we need to change. Matthew chapter 5, 21 through 26, deals with reconciliation. Matthew 5, 27 to 32, faithfulness. 33 through 37, dealing with vows. If you make them, you better keep them. Otherwise, don't make them. 38 to 42, submission. And 43 to 47, love. All of these can be summed up with be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. You see, he sought to reconcile even when we were far off and he really didn't have to do anything. I mean, we were the ones that left. He didn't have to do anything. He could have just let us go, but he sought to reconcile through the blood of his son. He has been faithful even when we choose not to be faithful. He keeps his vows. He keeps his promises. You know, he has never lied to us and never will. The things he says are going to come to fruition. We can count on it. Take it to the bank. His promises are sure or they are secure. His son submitted even to the point of death. A death that he did not deserve. And love, I mean, do we even have to talk about how much he loves us? He loves us so, so very much, so sacrificially, we can't even imagine. I mean, it's hard to put into words. If we have these things in our lives, if we are aiming at these things in our lives, we are aiming at being mature. 
We are aiming at being perfect. Same word. We are aiming at being like our Father in heaven. And that is what Jesus says we need to do. That is not an easy feat. That is not an easy pursuit. What we're going to do next, we're going to read the other account of the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, it's in Luke chapter 6. It's 20 through 49. And this one deals not just with our relationships, but with social justice in many ways. And he's calling them out because, well, again, people haven't changed. They're having trouble treating one another the way God wants them to treat one another. Let's go ahead and open our Bibles again to the, at uh, Luke chapter 6, 20 through 49. And turning his gaze toward his disciples, he began to say, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you shall be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when men hate you and ostracize you and insult you and scorn your name as evil for the sake of the Son of Man. Be glad in that day and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way, their fathers used to treat the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you are receiving your comfort in full. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you shall be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe to you when all men speak well of you, for their fathers used to treat the false prophets in the same way. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. Whoever hits you on the cheek, offer him the other also. And whoever takes away your coat, do not withhold your shirt from him either. Give to everyone who asks of you, and whoever takes away what is yours, do not demand it back. Treat others the same way you want them to treat you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners in order to receive back the same amount. But love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return, and your reward will be great. And you will be sons of the Most High, for he himself is kind to ungrateful and evil men. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. And do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Pardon, and you will be pardoned. Give, and it will be given to you. They will pour into your lap a good measure. Press down, shaken together, and running over. For by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you in return. And he also spoke a parable to them. A blind man cannot guide a blind man, can he? Will they not both fall into a pit? A pupil is not above his teacher, but everyone, after he has been fully trained, will be like his teacher. Why do you look at the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, Brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when you yourself do not see the log that is in your own eye? You hypocrite! First, take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take out the speck that is in your brother's eye. For there is no good tree which produces bad fruit, nor, on the other hand, a bad tree which produces good fruit. For each tree is known by its fruit. For men do not gather figs from thorns, nor do they pick grapes from the briar bush. 
The good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth what is good. And the evil man, out of the evil treasure, brings forth what is evil. For his mouth speaks from that which fills his heart. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Everyone who comes to me and hears my words and acts on them, I will show you whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid a foundation on the rock. And when a flood occurred, the torrent burst against that house and could not shake it. But it is, had been built well. But the one who has heard and has not acted accordingly is like a man who built a house on the ground without any foundation. And the torrent burst against it and immediately it collapsed. And the ruin of that house was great. Some things, some things never change. People have always valued things different than God values them. Do we? Sure we do. But it may be different for you than it is for me. I may use something differently uh, than God does, and you may value something else differently than God does. Either way we go, we need to bring our will into submission with his will. Because God's values are the only ones that matter. There's a lack of social justice. Hopefully that's not you and I. You know, uh, cheating those who are less well off. Lying to those who can't really do anything about it anyway. Who have no status. Um, have no money. You know, things like that. Ignoring the downtrodden instead of standing up for them. Selfishness, greed. Paul calls greed idolatry. Surely you and I are not idolaters, are we? I hope and pray we are not. But if we are greedy, whether we are wealthy or not, if we are greedy, if money is our God, we are idolaters. And that needs to stop. Judgment on others while ignoring our own sin. I can't believe they did that. And we do the same thing. Or we do something very similar. Only giving lip service to the teachings of Jesus. Do we do that? Do we show up on Sundays just so we can get a little check mark on the, on the roll sheet? But really we don't pay attention. We don't worship. We don't submit ourselves to God day in and day out. We don't present our bodies as holy living sacrifices to him daily. Are we giving lip service to him? He doesn't want our lip service. In fact, it's offensive to him. But think about it. If our kids only gave lip service to us and didn't do what we said, we would be offended. We would be upset. He has perfect reason for that as well. Failure to listen and obey Jesus' teachings lead to great ruin. God is the only one, the only one who really truly knows what's going on in this world. I mean, honestly. He knows the ins and the outs. He knows the outcome. He knows the timetable. He has given us everything we need for life and godliness. For us to ignore what he has said. We might as well get in our car. Put it in drive. Close our eyes. And drive down the road. But you're saying, Kevin, that'll wreck the car. Uh-huh, exactly. Ignoring the teachings of God is like doing that. We are blindfolded and attempting to drive our vehicles. It's not going to work. A blind man can't lead a blind man unless they both fall into a ditch, right? 
same type of situation. So as we get ready to close today, I've got a few questions for us to consider and hopefully help us to improve our walk with God. Do we value things differently than God does? We all have at different times. Hopefully we have seen that the way we value them needs to coincide, needs to match the way he values them. Because some things that we think are important, they're not important 10 years from now. The things he thinks are important, they're important for eternity. We need to look at things the way he looks at them. We need to look at people the way he looks at them. Do we promote or practice social injustice? If we do, we need to change that. We need to be people that stand the way God wants us to stand, by his laws, by the way he views people. Even if the world treats people badly, we should not because we serve the ultimate authority. We serve the almighty God. We wear his name, his reputation. We need to remember that and treat people the way he wants us to treat them, the way he treated us. Do we lead selfish and greedy lifestyles? Do we judge others while ignoring our own sin? Do we only give lip service to Jesus' teachings? Thank you for our time together today. Have a blessed week. Hey, don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss anything that's coming up on In Need of a Refill. And remember, if you're ever in need of a refill on God's Word, all we've got to do is take it off our shelves and spend some time with Him. We won't regret it. Have a blessed week.